Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Capitalist Investor. As always, you have me, Diamond Hands D. And we got the whole crew together again. Tony the Tiger, Cool Hands Luke. What's going on, guys? How are we doing? What's up? I think Tony and I are both tired. tired. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I know just, why Tony's tired, but I got two hours of sleep. Just like. can't sleep. I don't know what it is. Well, I barely made it through yesterday, so I slept, fell asleep at like 9 o'clock last night. So I'm actually feeling good. <laughs> just rub <laughs> it in. <laughs> Jealous, man. So we are changing <clears throat> the structure up, I think, of the show. Want to kind of go through that quickly? Yeah. So um, I came like so I, I want to start creating a um, more of a, an idea behind like financial planning and, and financial planning topics ranging from uh, financial plans, inflation, um, building a portfolio like we have probably the next four months built out um so every week we'll come with a different topic um and i want to call it more of like the financial you know financial planning corner uh, of the show and and we'll kick off with that and then and then we'll talk about like maybe one of the the you know the top one or two hot topics that are going on in just general investing um, so yep. like we usually do, but it'll be chiseled down to the top one or two topics, but we'll always kick off with uh, the financial plan. So with that being said, the first financial planning corner topic, the key elements of a financial plan, a comprehensive financial plan. So at the end of the day, um, you know, I feel that Strategic Wealth Partners is a financial planning firm because if we don't have a plan, I can't you know, the recommendations for the portfolio, the recommendations for retirement, uh, retirement goals, spending, it's all guesswork, right? So, and you know, I, I always tell people that um, a financial plan is twofold. First of all, for, for the client, it is, it's a crystal ball. It's a crystal ball for you to look into the future and really put together what you have saved, what you spend, how you live your life, it, it allows you to figure out, will you have enough money to last you the, your entire life? A crystal ball into the future. For me, and, and the other planners like Derek and Luke, um, it is a, it's the blueprint. It's the blueprint for the recommendations um, and, and how to make what your retirement goals, how to make them happen. Yeah. So um, from the plan, you're, we're gonna get retirement decisions, you know? When's the right time to retire? When do you start Social Security? Tax strategies. You know, what if tax laws change, how does that change your plan? If you have a pension or a lump sum, which one do you take? Um, long-term care, is that, can you self-insure or do you need help with like some type of long-term care policy? Um, if your plan's successful, um, the old saying, you can't take it with you, uh, rings true. So if you have a successful plan, can you spend more in retirement? I think it's important to go over what actually like a plan is though, like the actual metrics you're going to get when you take away, what you take away from the financial plan. So like, I know I came into the industry and I know a lot of people I talk to think a financial plan is essentially us putting pen to paper and saying, Hey, like, here's your budget for the foreseeable future. Here's like what you can do, what you can't do. Like, this is kind of like what's going on from a financial planning perspective, stick to this and you're good for the next 20 or 30 years. That's what most people think a financial plan is. And the fact of the matter is it's not that because we always talk about how planning's not an event, it's a process, right? It's always changing because things change all the time, but it's not just pen to paper showing you what you can spend, what you can't spend. It's really about showing you those what if, and I know that's kind of the topics for today too, is the what if scenarios. What if inflation runs hot? How's that going to impact your situation? What if you retire earlier? What if you spend more in retirement? Like, well, how is this ultimately going to impact your chance of success? Mm-hmm. That's what we care about is the chance of success that you don't run out of money age 90 or 95. Exactly. I think uh, most people, when they think of financial plans, are exactly what Luke just said. Hey, like, am I going to be okay? We put in a couple pieces of information and, you know, it's either a thumbs up or a thumbs down on retirement. Um, when you're doing a comprehensive financial plan, however, it should be giving you essentially bullet points on here is what we need to do to make your retirement better. And here is the dollar amounts that, that we can expect to, to realize from it in the future. Um, and, and I think that's what because when people are out there looking, they're talking to advisors, they're trying to figure out their own situation, they're getting bombarded with a whole bunch of messages. And most of those messages are investments, right? You know, 
you're, you're doing it wrong because you need this investment or you're doing it wrong because you need this annuity. And just putting financial products in place doesn't necessarily build your financial plan to be you know maximized. And I think that's what we really want to talk about, but also make sure that you're protected as well. You know, most people, the main function of a good financial plan is to give them that peace of mind that everything that they're doing um, is working towards that common goal. Yeah, go ahead. Here's the problem, though, with what you're kind of saying is as planners, I see a lot of people, I think, making mistakes in this industry nowadays with using only history as a gauge for the future. And this goes along with the whole investment returns kind of calculation or philosophy about how we we need to keep in mind with all the damage we've done for the past you know all the printing of stimulus all the trillions of dollars we printed this debt this debt cycle we're in that we talk about all the time on this podcast you know how's that going to impact future returns going forward i think a lot of financial planners always say oh the market's going to return seven or eight percent for every single year oh you just got to look to history if you do this do this do that you're going to be okay for the for the future for the next 30 40 years well The past 10 10 years certainly probably are not going to be like the next 10 years. And I'd say the past 30, 40 years are definitely not going to be like the next 30 or 40 years, right? So a good financial planner is going to take into account philosophies about the future and factor that into your financial plan. So what you're really saying is that, you know, if you – inside the planning software, the only variable are the investments because they go up and down. Because we can dial in what I call the constants, your your budget – your social security, your income before you retire, your pen, you know, whatever you have going on in your life, you know, the biggest number in the whole planet needs to be the most consistent in your budget. Um, but the investments are the thing that drive the returns like, or the return of the plan or the, the results of the plan, because it's the biggest variable. Uh, you can't just put a 7% rate of return in your thing and, and not have any variance because we know the market goes up 20% and then it goes down 30%, right? It, there's these huge swings sometimes. Um, and, and what Luke is really alluding to is that the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, the average rate of return of the market is, I don't know, maybe let's just call it 10% yeah. roughly, right? Do we really feel that 10% is realistic on a going forward basis too? So what we're trying to say is that we try and in, in at least on our planning software in our planning team we try to taper those expectations and and provide lower rates of return so that and it's a form of a stress test in the plan you know we're stressing the plan and assuming we're going to get lower rates of return now if we get higher rates of return which we will absolutely try to do um it's only going to make your plan better but i want to not give us pie you know pie in the sky kind of returns and then we don't realize that in the next 10 or 15 20 years of your retirement your plan blows up yeah that's what i'm what we're really saying and so for example i had a a great case example um last week or i'm sorry uh yesterday had a client come in uh brian and beth brian and beth started with us about a year ago and Beth just was full, just start, just started retirement. Literally like the day we started working was the day that she retired. Um, Brian was more semi-retired and, and things like that. And they, we sat down yesterday and man, were they tan, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm like, where are you guys been? And they're like, well, I went to Florida, you know, for a month. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome. How'd you like it? They're like, we loved it. We want to do more of it. So that immediately perked my ears because I know that when we built their plan um, and after conversations, they're like, we want to do that. You know, we, we had it planned for like one or two times a year. We want to go at least four times a year. Yeah. So now that is a bigger expense outlay and they're nervous. Well, maybe not nervous, but they really, really, really want to know, Tony, can we do this and get away with it? And, and so that's where it's like, okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to rebuild your plan and we're going to see how many vacations they can get away with. And, we, and then we talked in more detail, like, yeah, we want to do this for at least the next 10 years um, and then maybe taper it down, you know? So having a plan, having a vision, understanding that vision from the client is so important so that we can model it inside of the planning software. Like you said, engineer, um, yeah. you're the engineer kind of here, right? So like you like to financially engineer those answers for you because that's all planning is is giving you the answers and peace of mind making you able to sleep at night better knowing the possibilities of your scenario yep 
Yep. And and then I also like just asking the financial planning software, what ifs? You know, like that's the perfect, what if I spent more money on vacations? Can I do that? And then simultaneously, we had a, I had the investment team there as well. And with the investment team there, um, we started thinking of investment strategies that are going to make this plan work because what they're currently doing isn't going to hurt them, but they have an idea of not touching the principal. So what does that mean? I got to figure out ways to increase the income of the portfolio to generate the money to make the, make this, make these expenses happen yep. or, or see if we can make it happen. Yeah. I got, I have a good uh, recent example of that one too. Um, when I, when I first met these clients, you know, they, their portfolios were okay. Uh, but I would say they were extremely conservative. You know, there was a lot of cash in there. Um, and they had saved a, a really good amount for retirement. So basically they kind of felt they could be more conservative, uh, with, with, you know, the assets that, that they had, uh, accumulated. Um, you know, however, their, their spending was, you know, basically, you know, what, what they were making. So when you project that forward with kind of a lower rate of return in the plan, their plan actually didn't work very well. So we needed to basically get that return up without increasing the standard deviation. So when you can pinpoint and dial in the actual investment strategies into the financial plan versus just putting, you know, a flat rate of return, six, 7% or historical rates yeah, of return, or, right? or even higher, you know, you're going to get much more dialed into reality, you know, exactly what, what you can do. Um, and that's what, that's where that peace of mind comes in again. That, that's ultimately what, what people are looking for, knowing that they're going to be okay. And sometimes some of the things that people think, you know, in the back of their mind, sometimes aren't correct. You know, sometimes they are, but sometimes they aren't. That's what the plan does in black and white. It shows you where we need to go and how this needs to look. Yep. All right. So, I mean, anything else you guys want to add on the plan? I think, um, I think we gave a good broad base of what it does. And, and again, it, it all starts with providing the vision for the client and providing the roadmap for the advisor for the recommendations. Um, but man, we can, you know, it's my job, it's our job, our planning team's job to really dial in the nuances of like the re investments return, making sure the budget's right. Yep. The next topic we're going to talk about inflation, you know, like well, how, how, do, how we, we've been having internal discussions on how do we model inflation when the last 10 plus years behind us have been you know, maybe the 10 or 20 years behind us have been lo really low single digits, either between zero and 2%. And now we're getting hot and quote unquote, hot inflation of, you know, between three and four now. So how do we, how do we do that inside the plan? And, um, you know, to give you some indication is that, um, we are using, we have always been using 3% for inflation. Um, and we're going to continue to use that because we do feel it will normalize. But if that's a what if, like if I have a client, they're saying, I'm really worried about inflation. I think it's going to be 5% for a long period of time. Then we build a plan. We build a scenario like that. Like, here's what you need to do if inflation is 5%, right? Yep. Like, so um, with that being said, you know, transition into, you know, some of the hot topics going on in right now. And uh, what CPI came out yesterday. Yeah, it was just a little hot. <laughs> you know, it wasn't anything too crazy, but, you know, it wasn't a great number. It wasn't a horrible number, but, you know, I think it came in 0.1% uh, above estimates. Um, you know, what was the exact number? 3.5 or 3.2? 3.2. 3.1 was expected. 3.1 yeah. was expected. So we're still in the low threes. We're not down to the 2% Federal Reserve target, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm going to say the same thing that I've been talking about. Um, you know, I think that one of the things that the Federal Reserve has no idea about is the amount of money and billions of dollars that companies are investing in this technology AI revolution that we always talk about, right? So if you have a bunch of companies, corporations pouring billions of dollars into R&D and implementation of technology AI, like the Wendy's of the world implementing, you know, robots to serve people, whatever you want to, you know, example you want to use, um, that's inflationary at the beginning. It's deflationary in the end because technology is deflationary in the end. But at the beginning, when you're investing billions of dollars, that gets spread out through, throughout the economy. Um, that's inflationary. So I think that's one factor that could actually you can continue to see an uptick in inflation because of that. I, you know, I saw something 
I, I think inflation is going to be high for a while. And, and, and here's one of the other reasons is that um, since 2000, the U.S. has printed, you know, 80 percent of all the U.S. dollars in circulation. And in 2020, there were four trillion dollars in circulation. Today, there's 19 trillion dollars. Again, more dollars chasing few goods equals inflation. Right. We are talking about, a th- you know, a, over, over almost a 400, 300, between 300 and 400 percent jump in money that is available to people. And and now we, ha- you know, that's why credit cards are going up and maybe no one cares no, because no one. as long as you mm-hmm. got a car, as long as you have a job and you can pay your debt, well, you know, like, does that matter? Um, but it's expensive. You know, we talked about it a, a show or two ago that, you know, with, um, you know, the, the Biden administration coming in and chopping late fees from thirty two dollars to eight dollars. You know, are we going to have more late fees? Man, and twenty four dollars savings is going <laughs> to do a lot. <laughs> it's you know, right. But um, but what that's really going to do is that those companies need to make that money up somewhere and they're just going to wreck. They're going to jack up our interest rates. So people who are accumulating debt are going to pay more on that debt. That sounds inflationary. You, you're chasing your tail. Can we hit on that real quick? Chopping late fees from 32 to like, was it eight? Yeah. Like, anybody in middle class America just thinks that's stupid. Like, you're just, you're literally going tailoring to like the lower of the low class. But, to but, get but, votes. but, I, but I, I had the statistic last week and I, I'll try and do it off of memory, but like 25, this affects 25% of the debt paying population or something. Mm-hmm. Like, it's 25% or 30%. But like, like, is like anyone getting excited, though, over saving 24 bucks? It's going to save people $200 a year. And, and to the Biden administration, that's important. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Like, but, I agree with you, but yeah, like, I, I would rather pay a lower interest rate. I'd rather pay a lower interest rate and have lower inflation. <laughs> yeah. Me too. But that's not going to happen if, if you chop – if that, those credit card companies are going to make up their money somewhere else. And it's going to be through the interest that they charge you. I, I don't know how you can't. There's a yin and a yang. There's a pull and a, <laughs> there's a, a push a and a pull. And you know, there's this push and pull, and it's gonna equal out. I, said, I don't know. Um, but I was I was baffled that this affects twenty twenty five to thirty percent of the population is this is going to affect them. That means that's that means thir- a third of the working population are late on their credit card payments. Yep, yep. that's crazy. This goes to, me. to um. Another thing, point I had too was um, the addiction to debt. I always talk about addiction to debt. You know, I, w- one of my good mentors um, said to me that that's like a drug. The more debt you take, the more you want, the more you're, you're okay with. Right. I think we're at a point where you have to factor in the comfortability with debt. People haven't lost their homes yet. People mm-hmm. haven't lost their cars. Yep. If they're late on their credit cards, they're like, oh, I'm just getting late. Like, cool, I get charged a twenty dollar late fee, thirty dollar late fee, eight dollar late fee. Mm-hmm. Like, cool, that's all that happens. Well, let me keep on racking up debt because they're not coming from my house. They're not coming from my car. Like, let's just keep this debt brigade going. They're comfortable now because they're seeing that there's not really any big repercussions yet mm-hmm. until they absolutely cannot they max out everything and then they they can't pay their mortgage or they can't go get another loan to pay off their old debt like basically people are doing the same thing the government's doing they're printing new money new debt to pay off old debt and that's only sustainable for a certain period of time i agree all right uh there was one other thing that i saw um so this is going to be a new note for you guys because i saw it as i was walking in here um but top cfos are bullish on the dow and dovish on the Fed uh, as they've been in a long time. So I thought that was pretty interesting Um, because what that really means is that... um, Soft landing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, quote unquote soft landing. And, but the one thing that they said is that uh, uh, one of the consistent views is that they don't see inflation getting to 2% at any time, which is the Fed's kind of benchmark for lowering interest rates i don't understand how we're going to lower interest rates in june or july is kind of the time frame the, the what is it 70 percent chance that they do that so the heck's going to happen in june or july <laughs> for them to do that why would they i like what they're doing they're letting the only way is letting it settle at two percent or, or the job market breaks right i don't see any of those happening. which it has though the, there was an uptick unemployment that's one thing that was last friday i believe came out um, unemployment was at 3.7%. Now it's at 39 So you did see a 20 basis point <clears throat> jump. Yeah. So if that continues, That's because they just have to revise the numbers because the numbers that they put out are 
fake. True. <laughs> well, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Inf- sorry, they're inflated too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah, um, that's um, <clears throat> yeah. It's it's um, it it is. We, we we make you know this is a uh, is meant to be entertainment this show right we make a lot of predictions they're not always right but we've been saying for a long time about inflation how like there's no way that it's going to start to go down and we've been right for a long time and yeah. and I'm still on that train you know I don't know when the next rate cut is coming but it doesn't seem like it's one good CPI reading away yeah I I don't I don't think I would be surprised if we got one this year. I don't know what what the forecast is saying now. I know we started off with six, and they were supposed to happen in in March. The, was it going to be the first one? So right. let, let me let me also say this. This is also there's a philosophical term associated with this. But when you talk about something enough, it becomes true. Mm-hmm. The more we talk about inflation staying high, <laughs> the more likely it is to stay high. Because a small business owner down the street, or any business owner down the street that knows that everyone's being impacted by inflation will continue to keep rising their prices because they think everyone else is doing it too. Yep. So that's why it's going to make inflation coming down even harder. Well, that too, was we're all of, talking about inflation. That, that was the part of uh, the State of the Union. The, the President Biden's talking about shrinkflation. They're putting less chips in your chip bag. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Crazy. Um, I mean, it is true. Well, if also you talk about people spending money. You're like, everyone else is spending money. Why don't I spend money? That also causes inflation as well. Yep. Again, when you start comparing yourself to others, it starts influencing your own decisions, which also also goes into the, what we were just talking about, the macro factors, inflation, interest rates, and economy. Yeah. Um, inflation will be here because we printed so much money. There's so much money available out there, believe it or not. Um, I, I think I heard a statistic today that there's $6 trillion in money markets <laughs> um, you yeah, know, like being, five trillion of a, is mine. Just well, yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, guys. Um, all right, good show. If um, you know, if you like what um, what we're thinking about for for the financial planning corner, let us know if there's a topic you'd like us to talk about. Um, we have the next several weeks and months mapped out, but if there's a financial topic that you'd like us to to talk about, we can accommodate and, and shuffle things around so let us know uh but uh take us home dave all right well hey thanks for listening this week if you got any uh questions comments show ideas hit us up at info at swpconnect.com and we'll talk to you next week the opinions expressed in the podcast are for general informational purposes only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any investment legal financial or tax strategy It is only intended to provide education about the financial industry. Please consult a qualified professional about your individual needs.